in the book of Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Hallelujah. See, we found out around Christmas time that Isaiah was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. And in that lineage, Uzziah was there too. And Isaiah understood one thing. He said, the year that Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. And that tells me that I don't have to wait for somebody else or something around me to die. All I got to do is allow some things within me to die so I can see the Lord more clearly. Glory to God. See, just because we saved and we sanctified don't mean we arrived. Glory to God. We got to allow some things like prophet Isaiah said, some stuff got to die. I want to see the Lord. Say, I don't know about you. Now, the time is winding up. These years are going by so fast. And the word of God said that no man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. But I've been hearing that he's been coming for a long, long time. And the Bible declares that he's coming on a cloud. And every eye is going to see him. Every tongue is going to confess. Every knee is going to bow down and cry out that Jesus Christ is Lord. See, and in that day, he said, I'm coming with my reward in my hand. So whatever state that we're in, that's the kind of reward we're going to receive. See, we got to get ourselves prepared to receive from the Lord. He's already came down through 42 generations. And through those generations, he stopped by for 33 years. Then he had to leave us for a little while. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if Jesus went back to prepare a place for you, I believe him to be a man to God. I believe him to be of the spirit of God. I know he was the son of man, but thanks be to God that he's a God that he can't lie. Nor the son of man that he has to repent. If he said he's going to prepare a place for us, he's preparing a place. So I understand that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. So we got to be prepared to receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody wants something from God, but they ain't prepared to receive it. We cry about we want the Holy Ghost. Well, my Bible tells me that the Holy Ghost won't dwell in an unclean temple. And if we want to be endowed with the Holy Ghost, some of this stuff that we're holding on to, some of these folk that we're hanging around, we got to let them go and prepare ourselves to receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself. You want the Holy Ghost? He'll freely give it. But he won't dwell in no unclean temple. We're walking right now in the season of promise. In other words, in the season of receiving. Because God is a promise keeper. And just like he did it for Abraham over 2,000 years ago, he can do it for me. I'm of Abraham's seed. He couldn't name the stars, but I was in the number. Glory to God. You was in the number. But Abraham even had to prepare himself to receive of the Lord. You know how he began with preparation? He said, come from among them. That my mom and them. Come from among them. That my grandma come from among them. Get your bags, Abraham, and go. And guess what Abraham did? He went. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but anything hindering me from getting what I'm supposed to get in God, you got to go. Hallelujah. Ain't time for faking no jacks, playing no games up in the house of God. I dare not wind up in hell smelling like the church. Don't you know they're going to beat the stew out of you down there? You think you got fight game now? Oh, they're going to tear you slap up. That's why they got a special chamber for them. Those that kept coming in here, kept coming in here. 
confessing it with their mouth, then receive it in their heart. Because if you receive something on the inside, something got to come on the outside. Ain't no way no seed going to go in the ground and something don't come up. I don't care if it's a wild weed, but something is coming up. Glory to God. Oh, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, but we're going to stay right here at hand. Amen. I'm sick and tired of sitting folk, seeing folks sit in the house of God. And then when they die, we automatically assume they went to heaven. Now, I don't know, but God knows. Glory to God. And but I know what the word says. Ain't no unforgiveness gonna get in. Ain't no lie gonna tarry in his sight. You can't even hang around the gate. You got to leave there. That lying spirit. Oh, it's evident in the house of God. We tell the biggest lie. Folk done got so bold they lie in the house of God. And lie so much they believe their own self. Jesus. You're deceiving your own self. He said, all liars got their place in the lake of fire. Good God Almighty. And baby, I don't know about you, but when you go to hell, I believe you got on gasoline drawers. Because you're going to set something ablaze. And it's going to set you ablaze. So if you're a liar, tell God to free you from it. So you can receive everything he has for you. Amen. Don't you know that's bondage? You a backbiter? You know that song, Smiling Faces? Tell lies? They just won't tell the truth. All up in your face, skinning and grinning. I'm so sick of this. You ain't got to be in my face. It's all right. I'm going to serve God anyhow, with or without anybody else. See, we got to get that down in our spirit. We get so caught up in folk, if we can ever get delivered from folk. I'm so glad Isaiah said when us I died, I saw the Lord. That told me two things. See, I already know that something in me had to die. But it told me that some stuff around me got to die. But my main concern is getting myself together so I can make it in. And if it takes me disconnecting myself from you, then that's what I have to do. Amen. Don't get mad at me because I didn't answer your call. You just, you just lied to me. You ain't going to be able to tarry in his sight if he come. And you a liar and I'm hanging with you. Y'all ain't getting burned up for you. I love you. But I want to love you so you can get to where you need to go and go. I'm not going to get burned up with you. I don't want you to get burned up with me. That's why I take my time to try to live right every day. Not just when I come in here. Had to prepare myself. Glory to God, this ain't about to blow me out, Bishop. Please help. But when we get to this place of Isaiah, the 61st chapter, oh, it's good news. It's some good news. Regardless of whether we lying, whether we fornicating, whether we backbiting, whether we commit adultery, regardless of whatever state you're in. Oh, I ain't forgot about the drug heads and the cigarettes and the alcohol. I ain't forgot about none of that. Because guess what? That stuff keeps you in bondage. But I come to tell you, according to Isaiah, he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. See, we got to humble ourselves. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. It's all right. I understand. I done been broken hearted so many times. God said, somebody got to bind them up. And I found out that whatsoever we bind down here on earth, he said he abounded in heaven. Yeah. Glory to God. You ain't got to keep crying over that buster. Let him go. Yeah. And that sister neither. Let her go. God got something greater. Glory to God to proclaim liberty to the captives. You ain't got to be in them shackles no more. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. See, we automatically ready to flee. Oh, we, they, she preaching to the guys from the camp. The devil is a liar. See, they know that they saved. They know that they've been bought with a price. They know that they're born again. And he whom the son set free 
is free indeed, regardless of the physical bars, because many of us have emotional bars. Oh, she said something about me last year. I just can't let it go. Let it go, baby. Because she going on, she done forgot. I might have walked past somebody, didn't even see him last year. Pastor didn't speak to me. I ain't studying her. She looks so mean. I don't like her. I want to talk to Bishop. Well, baby, let me tell you something. To get the Bishop, you got to go through me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, and I'm not afraid. I'm not intimidated. I don't care about other women talking to him. Glory to God, because what God has ordained, he will sustain. Amen. Glory to God. But the thing about it is, you got to be free in God. Said to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And we're going to stop right there for a minute. The acceptable year of the Lord. Glory to God. The receiving year of the Lord. I come to announce this morning. That we're in the year of receiving. But in order to receive, we got to be prepared. Glory to God. A woman's body prepares itself even before conception takes place. I don't care how many times her and her husband get together. I know it happens other ways. I was a witness. I was caught out there. Amen. And babies are conceived. But if my body is not prepared to receive, I'm not going to have no baby. Glory to God. The body knows that I got to come subject. We, as a body of Christ, we got to know that we got to come subject to the things of God. If we ever want anything to happen in our lives, to go somewhere in God, we got to prepare ourselves. We got to submit ourselves under the mighty hand of God so he can exalt us. We love to holler, resist the devil, so, and he'll flee. Resist the devil, resist the devil, resist the devil. If you don't submit to God, you ain't got no power to resist nobody. It's time out for talking about how good God is. Just live how good God is. Show the world with your lifestyle how good God is. Oh, I know people put all kind of propaganda out there, but guess what? You still live the life what God has called you to. Because if I laid down to what everybody said about me, I'd be at the house right now. But because I know who I am in God, people of God, we got to find out who we are in God. And know who we serve. And know what he can do. In and through us, it ain't about us. They ain't attacking you. They attacking what's in you. They trying to stop you from getting to where you need to be in God. They trying to stop you from receiving from God. They trying to stop conception. Oh, well, look at it in the natural. That's why we take birth control. Because we don't want anything to happen. We taking pills and we taking needles. We taking patches. Anything to prevent. And some of us are wearing patches today, preventing the spirit of God to actually penetrate us so that we can receive from him. And, th and that baby begin to grow in us. And this isn't in the spirit. I ain't talking about nothing nasty. Glory to God. We ain't going back the way he's at. We ain't going out like that. Glory to God. But if we want conception to take place, we have to prepare ourselves. When a couple is married and the wife is on birth control, when they're ready to have a baby, she stops the birth control. He put up the little plastic patch. Because ain't nothing 100% in man. But with God, all things are possible. But the problem is, is when we not receive of God, we begin to do things our own way. We begin to operate in the flesh. And I, mm, shoot, God told me he was going to give me this. Well, I'm going to get this one right here. He told me he's been sending my husband. Hmm, that must be him. The devil is a lie. The Bible declares that he that find a wife find a good thing 
and obtain a favor from the Lord. I dare you jump up in his face. Talk about, I believe you my husband. You already out of order. And as the man got in his sins, he said, woman, you sent from the devil. It's the truth. You can prepare yourself to receive your husband through the word of God. See, when I'm about my father's business, doing things that's going to please him, if I take care of the things of God first, God going to take care of me. And you best believe I wasn't looking for no husband. I was looking for deliverance. I was looking for healing because I walked around hurt for a long time. Walked around jacked up and tore up from the floor for a long time. But when God stepped in, and I didn't hear the words, that's your husband. I heard God say, you can yield to him. You can trust him. He's going to take care of you. That's what I heard God say. Ain't them attributes of a husband. My God. If you ain't got no J-O-B, he ain't down with G-O-D. He ain't got no ATM card. He probably ain't your husband. He's not prepared. Stop you knocking us out. No, I ain't knocking you out. Can you take care of her? Can you love, honor, and cherish her? Can you keep a roof over her head? Oh, we get out the wheel. Oh, we, we're so good. He told me he loved me. God loves you best. When you understand God's love, all that other mess got to go. I had a stalker one time. I'm a happy young lady. Had a stalker one time. This cat, it will turn around that he go. What? You better quit following me. You come on my job again, I'm going to call the police. I just believe you, my wife. Cat, you a liar. You a cheater. And I know you lying because I ain't never got no divorce. You a liar. And the truth ain't in you. And if you come up on this job one more time, you going to jail. Now, how about that? I ain't seen it since. Thanks be to God. Oh, you beautiful. You this and you that. I said, honey, I don't need you to tell me that. This is the part I want you to know. I told that buster, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew every hair he placed on my head. I keep it together because I keep it together for him. Ain't nobody studying you. Oh, you a little cocky. No, I know who I am in God. And you better get off this property. Boy, I'm going to tell my postmaster somebody is harassing me. It's a way to deal with them. You got to be bold. You got to stand firm. If you ain't going where I'm trying to go in God, leave me alone. Leave me alone. If you don't have my best interest at heart, that's what it's for men and women. If you don't have my best interest at heart, leave me alone. Glory to God. We ain't got time for that foolishness. Don't you know Jesus already went back? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now as we speak. He's preparing a place for us. I heard somebody say the other day, we ain't got to be bunked up on top of one another. I got my own spot up there. Yeah. I got my own mansion. And I'm going to be walking on streets paved with all. I bet my feet won't hurt up there, mother. You think I'm going to let somebody stop me from getting up there in the place where I ain't got to feel pain no more? You think I'm going to allow somebody to hinder me from getting to the things of God where I ain't got to cry no more? I got to prepare myself now. I read in the word that he that soweth in tears. One of these days you're going to reap in joy. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We come to set the captive free on the day. Come to bring you out of those chains in your mind. Come to let you know who really.
really loves you. Can't nobody love you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Song say, I looked to my left. I couldn't find nobody. Then another one say, I searched all over. I still couldn't find nobody. Nobody but the Lord. Nobody. Nobody. Even when I'm tore up inside. Ashamed to tell my brothers and my sisters. God knows. He knows all about it. And he told me that I can come boldly to his throne. He told me I can come naked and not ashamed. He ain't going to tell nobody. Glory to God. I ain't talking about just physically taking my clothes off. That means bearing my all to him, God. I'm messed up in this area. God, I got a problem here. And I just can't seem to get it together. God, you know, every time that sister come around me, something inside of me get upset. God, I don't know what it is. And he say, well, baby, you're dealing with bitterness. It's up to me to let go of the bitterness so I can walk in real love. But if I decide, well, I, Lord, I just can't let it go. You're refusing to obey God. God has already visited many of us here on today. And we're here to learn how to receive. I believe he sent you here. Glory to God on this day for this appointed time. This is the acceptable year. Mm-hmm, the year of receiving. Oh, yes, he said when we proclaim that thing, he said announce it. Cry it out. Cry out loud and spare not. See, when you begin to cry out, it's up to you. You can say they made you do it all you want to, but can't nobody make you do nothing. They didn't create you. They didn't give you breath. They didn't give you activities of your limbs. I'm going to feel what man do to me. Great is he that sent me than he that sent the world. I'm speaking to some spirits on the day. Come to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. The acceptable year of the Lord. This is your year. This is your season. This is your time. It's up to you to receive of the Lord. He said, in the last day, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. On all flesh. It don't matter about the age. It don't matter about your color. It don't matter about your race. It don't matter about your creed. Because we all came from somewhere. But we trying to get somewhere in God. And want to receive from the Lord. This is the acceptable year. anointed many of you to preach the gospel. 
But don't you know your anointing won't go in effect without the Holy Ghost? The anointing is not of no effect if you do it in yourself. It's just hovering over you. I want it to rest in me. Hallelujah, I wanted it to be dripping all up and through me. Glory to God. So when you speak to people, you don't even know what you're talking about. Sometimes they're like, woo, woo. Glory to God. Because it's the spirit of the God that's dealing with that spirit on the inside of them. You just got to be real with God. Hallelujah. And he'll do it through you. He'll do it through you. Time out for playing church today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we're going to stop right here. Got a whole nother scenario. That'll be a whole nother sermon. But it's preaching about the same thing. We're in the acceptable year. 2013. Everybody, ooh, the number 13, ooh. Ain't scared of nothing. All things that were made by him, God said that's good. That's good. The world get a hold to it and taint it and make it bad. Hallelujah. 2013, the acceptable year of the Lord. Ask Abraham. We'll talk about that next week. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Now is the time. Hallelujah. We're in the sea. know how the man say when he come on. I just want to be free right now. Open your mouth and begin to tell the Lord. Glory to God. You got to release the old so that you have the new. I can't go to God on your behalf if you don't want to go. Glory to God. I can say, God, have mercy upon him. Glory to God. But I said, Lord, do it, do it, do it. God said, I ain't going to do it unless he allowed me to do it. Glory to God. See, we get caught up in this thing because we, cause we hang. Oh, and he going to do it for me automatically. Maybe you got to get it for yourself. Glory to God. See, I don't know what nobody doing in the midnight hour unless it's something detrimental to your health, to your spirit, or to this ministry. Oh, God will reveal it. I don't need nobody calling me, telling me nothing. I wonder who told her. Ain't nobody got to tell us nothing. See, when you're connected to God and you love the people of God, it don't mean that you'll treat them wrong. Many of you can say right now, I know I done lied to Bishop. I know I lied to Pastor. But did we treat you any different? Some of us can even say, I lied on them. But did we treat you any different? You think we didn't know? Oh, honey, we knew. But because there's something in you that's greater than that lie you told, God, have mercy upon him. Give him another chance to get it right. Glory to God. That was 2012. We in 2013. All that, he ain't winking no more. Those of us that are old enough to know better, it's time to do better. Winking is gone. God said, I want you to receive this thing, but if you don't want it, you next in line, Deacon Bush, you're going to be in line to receive it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, God going to pour out his blessing. But some of us would have walked off and under the waterfall. And I come by, whoo, where that come from? The blessings of God will overtake you just like that. You can tell, go on and tell them haters, thank you. Hallelujah. You mad with me, now you're gone. But I caught your blessing because you wouldn't be still. You better stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. This is the acceptable year. The acceptable year. God, anything unlike it, I need you to get it out of me because I want to receive everything that you have stored up for me. I'm not even worried about going back, getting that stuff from the canker worm. Because God said, I got new mercies every morning. He said, I daily load you with benefits. Hallelujah. He's got it. Whatever I need, he said, he shall supply according to his riches and glory. All I got to do is humble myself under the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah. And if it's good for me, it's good for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We 
know we got stuff in us that ain't Christ-like? How do we know we can look in the Word of God? If it ain't lining up with the Word, that's not God. You can't receive if you want to receive. I mean really receive. You can't receive any kind of way now. You got to be open to receive. You got to have a willing heart to receive. And you got to release all that bitterness, all of that malice, all of that unforgiveness, all of that crap. You got to let it go so you can receive from the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't think it's a blessing when I obtain something and I'm struggling trying to pay for it. The Bible declares it's the blessings of God makes us rich and added no sorrow. You might need to check that stuff. I'm trying to help you this morning. I want you to receive in this acceptable year. Now is the time. Hallelujah. Come to set you free. Hallelujah. In your mind. In your heart. In your spirit. 